to have Marcia Langton to launch the report, and then Robin Room and Anne-Marie Lassert will um, give you the key findings of the report, and then we'll have um, an august panel, um, including the fabled Commissioner of Police, Andrew Scipione, without his hat on, um, to discuss the implications of the report, but also hopefully to have your contribution as well, to ask questions, make comments about what you actually do with information like this. This is a unique report. Uh, you won't find uh, data that is brought together in any other part of the world. This is the first time, um, to my understanding, this has been brought together with some French work which came close. But this is really some of the most comprehensive work ever done internationally to talk about the impact on others. We talk about the impact on others all the time, but we don't have measures on it. The thing that made the biggest difference with tobacco was data on passive smoking and the effect of smoke on others. That was the game changer. This could be the game changer in alcohol, and we need one. So that's what today is all about. Enjoy your lunch, and we will come back later. In other words, not pilot studies, but proofs of concept, development, building capacity throughout Australia from small communities, to indigenous communities, to large metropolitan areas. And so in small and large ways, this foundation has made an enormous impact and the effects of its investment will be lasting in Australia. And in more recent years has invested in, um, in research and teaching and one way is through um, the uh, support of the centre in Melbourne, led by Robin Room, who we'll meet in a moment. And so this report, this uh, academic exercise, which is very pragmatic in terms of its usability, is yet another investment by the AERF to uh, the AER Foundation to build something lasting and changing in terms of alcohol um, and alcohol use and abuse in Australia. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the chair of the Alcohol Education Rehabilitation Foundation, Sarah Bark, who is a foundation board member and has had a long-standing commitment and interest uh, in this area. She's also a board member of the ABC, so I'd like to welcome her. Please introduce. Please welcome Sarah. Thank you, Norman. Uh, thank you, Norman, for agreeing to be our uh, distinguished moderator today. We're very proud to have you along. Um, you will often serve us well. Thank you so much. So good afternoon, everyone, and I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, and thank you so much, Matilda, for your, uh, for your welcome to country. Um, I'd like to welcome a few guests today, including the past chair of the AER, Ian Webster, who's up here already on the panel. Um, for, I know many of you here know him and know him well, and you'll feel sorry for me because they're very, very, very big shoes I have to try and fill as chair of the AER following the footsteps of Ian. Um, and also fellow board member David Cosby and um, our CEO Ian Chalmers. But the wonderful panel of experts will be introduced properly, but I would like to acknowledge Professor Robin Room, Professor Marcia Langton, Dr. Anna Maria Lazarus, Commissioner Andrew, Andrew Scipioni, and Professor Gordon Fulde. Some of our guests here today also deserve acknowledgement, including Superintendent Tony Cook of the New South Wales Police, Michael Moore, the CEO of PHAA, Kath Peachy, the CEO of Drinkwise, David Templeman, CEO of AFTA, Gino Bumbaka, the EG of the Australian National Council on Drugs, Leonie Young, CEO of Beyond Blue. And thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for um, taking the time out to join with us at what we consider an extremely important point in the alcohol and alcohol reform policy um, journey. Um, it's been quite exciting here in Canberra, and it's a real story of um, it ain't over till it's over. But I just wonder how long it is going to drag on and on. But one of the reasons, you know, we had planned for today before we knew of the election being called, let alone this um, uh, perilous knife edge um, um, on continuous outcome. And one of the reasons we decided to stick with this particular date was so that we could ensure that alcohol and alcohol policy reform was placed at the top of the health agenda for whoever the next government called will be. 
we were particularly surprised, and I'm sure all of us were distressed, that alcohol wasn't discussed by any of the major parties throughout the election campaign. And we certainly intend from today onwards to make, um, to make our message loud and clear. The message is a broad one. We're appealing to all parties to prioritise alcohol policy reform. Throughout today's discussions, you'll hear some disturbing new evidence about the true cost of alcohol to the Australian economy and people. I'm sure you'll agree it's an issue we need to tackle now and tackle quickly. I'm pleased we have so many different sectors represented here today, including from the alcohol and other drug sector, members of the police force, our hospitals, leading academic institutions, social services and the media. It's not every day that we get to sit side by side and discuss these important issues. And in fact, you will have your opportunity to ask questions and have that conversation a little later. But it is a reflection on the significance of this groundbreaking research and also on um, our fantastic expert panel, panel today that we are all brought together. It demonstrates the importance of this topic to the national community. Our goal at the AAR Foundation has been to change the way we drink in Australia. And I think there's never been a more compelling case for change. This view doesn't just come from the experts, from, but from the Australian people themselves who want to change the drinking culture. Our research has consistently told us that the majority of people, around three quarters of Australians, agree we have a drinking problem. 80% of Australians think more needs to be done in Australia to reduce the harms of alcohol. We've also heard from the community time and again that they'd like to see a greater investment in the area of alcohol treatment and rehabilitation programs. So what's missing right now is the kind of the community standing up and saying, you know what, enough is enough. From now on, enough is enough. The jury's not out anymore, but is out there loud and clear. But what we're really missing are the tools to make the change. One of these tools is significant policy reform and more investment in community support. The government has previously identified the importance of addressing alcohol misuse in the National Preventative Health Strategy, the Henry Review, and through COAG. But the resulting actions, or lack thereof, have been very, very disappointing, particularly since there were actually practical suggestions on the implementation of a range of evidence-based strategies. I'll leave the findings of, of today's report to our experts to discuss, but it's important to note that our research shows that the impact of alcohol misuse in Australia has been significantly underestimated. So the case for change is even more compelling for the new government than ever before. As you'll hear discussed in greater detail shortly, the economic impact of alcohol misuse on the Australian economy is $36 billion each year. $36 billion, that's staggering. And to put some context around that, that's significantly higher than what's previously been quoted at about $15 billion, which is extraordinary in itself. So it's more than double, $36 billion. Yet these figures are still extremely conservative. And it all points to the fact that it's fair to say the jury is no longer out on Australia's culture of alcohol misuse, we now have ample evidence of urgent alcohol policy reform and that it's needed. We at the AAR Foundation believe it's time to move this issue of alcohol misuse much higher up the health agenda, which will be one of the key priorities. We're calling for genuine and immediate action and not just band-aid solutions. We at the AR Foundation strongly support the implementation of evidence-based measures, including volumetric taxation, independent regulation of alcohol advertising, and initi initiatives to limit the availability of alcohol. Our views aren't new, but what is new is the startling evidence that we're presenting in the report that we, uh, that we commissioned and that we're launching together today. Alcohol misuse affects the entire population. It's time we move beyond the outdated stereotypes of the lone drinker, of someone else's problem, of someone else somewhere far away from us. Because our alcohol misuse is everyone's problem. 
Today you'll hear about the tragic toll that alcohol misuse has on families and friendships, workplaces and communities right across the country. This is a serious problem, one we can't shy away from and one which we must work collaboratively. The communities, the um, government, organisations all across Australia. We are hoping and we believe you know, that by commissioning this report and from this amazing report which I said we will hear more about, that today will present the tipping point of a movement towards genuine alcohol policy reform and doing something to change the way we drink. I commend this report to you. I thank everyone for their involvement in it. And I look forward to all of you and each one of us playing our part in, in challenging alcohol misuse, saying enough is enough, and actually asking and demanding urgent action now. Thanks very much.